Hello and welcome to our first video in our series about force and torque measurement. So we're talking about force and torque measurement. Therefore, to measure force and torque, we have first to talk a little bit about the physics behind. Okay. I have a pro. Like this is now a probe, yeah, and I apply some force to it. Yeah. The result inside the probe is so called stress. Yeah. Apply force, I get stress. Stress is in German is Spannung. Okay. So we have got stress. This, the sign for stress, or the, the formula sign for stress, is usually a small sigma, yeah? And, of course, the unit is Newton per square meter. Usually Newton per square millimeter, but that's the SI, SI unit, okay? If I apply a force of, I don't know, 100 Newton, and this has a certain area, then there is a stress inside, of so and of 100 newton divided by one square centimeter, yeah? not even. Yeah? That's stress. What the result of stress is? Yeah? The result of stress is this material will get a little bit longer. Okay, will get a little bit longer. Will will receive a certain amount of strain, denung. Okay. Apply force, get stress, stress resulting in strain. Kraft aufbringen, Spannung, interne Spannung und Spannung erzeugt hier Dehnung. Okay. So there's strain. The usual formula sign for strain is a small epsilon. Okay. And the unit, the unit is one. Yeah. Why is the unit one? Okay, I will show you. There is my probe. This is the original probe. Yeah. And here will apply without force. Yeah. Then I apply force, then this probe is getting longer. And not that thick anymore. Here is when I applied force to the unit, to the probe. So there is a force F I have applied. Okay. This unit originally had the length. L0, length 0, and now has the length L. Yeah. It was getting longer yeah, because I pulled. Now has the length L. Yeah. And the strain epsilon, yeah, the strain epsilon is delta L to L0. This means here, here I have a delta L. Yeah? Delta L is L minus L0. Yeah? I have a change in length and this is given in meters. This is given in meters. So this unit is 1. Yeah? So this giving the percentage, how many percent we have strained this thing, okay? How many percent we have strained this thing? L0. L0, L, that's it. And the force and the area here gives the stress, okay? If I release 
this uh, force, it will go back into its usual form, into its previous form, if I have not applied too much force. I will draw you now, I will draw you now uh, a diagram. Here we do have the sigma, the stress. Yeah. Here we do have the strain. Yeah. How does it look like? At the beginning, if I apply stress, it will deform and will get longer. Yeah. Then at some point in time, at the so-called yield strength, Fließgrenze in German, yeah, this will then look like this, and then we will have something like this okay. and here ping, I finally ripped it apart okay. this is if I calculate the stress always on the original square here is the original square yeah. I'll use the thin, thin liner here is the original square A0 yeah. if I always calculate it on the original square then it looks like this. If I calculate it to the real square, so if the, to the actual square, then this is a little bit steeper here. Yeah. This will then move up and then it will look like this and go very high up. Okay, pinch. This is the real curve. Yeah. What is happening here? Here, at this Fließgrenze, at this yield, yeah, the material starts to deform permanently. It's not elastic anymore. Okay? It will start to deform permanently and it will even start to deform in a way that it gets at one point, it will get really thin. Okay? And this is then exactly the point where it will rip, rip apart. Yeah. This is what's happening here, but we should, of course, we should never get here. We should never get here. We should always stay here in this elastic, elastic area. And this elastic area yeah, is described by the Hooke's law. Okay, so there is a certain change. of stress resulting in a certain change of strain okay and this is linear yeah for many materials this is linear this is the typical typical uh, line of iron metal yeah? if you have rubber or something like this it looks a little bit different if you have hardened metal you will not see this 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 uh, yield yield strength here it will just ping rip yeah or glass will also ping just rip but before we usually have this elastic area yeah and it's a for the most for the most materials it's a pretty good uh, pretty good approximation that this is linear yeah and we do have a linear coefficient that's the so-called Young module. And the Young module, the sign is E. Okay. In German, there is no Young. In German, it's the Elasticitätsmodul, or the short E module. Okay. This is describing the steepness of this elastic area here. Yeah. So let's simply write it down. Sigma, the stress, is E multiplied by the strain. This unit here is Newton per square meter. This unit here is 1, so this unit here is Newton per square meter. And this is a typical material constant. Depending on the material, 
we have a typical E, yeah, two hundred thousand yeah? for steel, plain steel. Okay. Yeah. Why I'm telling you this? <laughs> Why I'm telling you this? Because if we want to measure the force, yeah, yeah, we cannot measure the force directly. We can only measure the strain. This is the thing I can measure. The strain is measured. Yeah? This is this what is measured. And from the strain I get back to the stress and from the stress I get back to the force. Okay? This is how this is working. Okay? The stress, sigma, yeah, is the force divided by the area. So the force is area multiplied by sigma and this equals A E epsilon. This is what I measure. These two I have to know. Okay. Often often it's I don't need really need to know the force, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's enough for me to know the stress, okay? Because stress, there's also a maximum stress for each material, and if I don't reach this, that's fine for me. However, if I want to measure force, yeah, if I want to measure force, then I really got to know those things, yeah. So there are special force measuring sensors, the special force measuring sensors, which do have a special form. They usually, they usually look like this. Here they have some strange opening. This is produced very accurate and so on, and the producers really know what they are doing. Here they are bolted down. Somewhere, yeah. And here the force is applied. This is the force I want to measure. Then, because this has so special form, there are different forms out there. Yeah? There are different forms out there. Usually they also have a cover here. There is the force. Yeah? And I do measure the strain here, usually here in this area somewhere. Yeah? And because this has a so special form, and this here is known very well, I can exactly tell what the force is. Yeah? This is a special form force transducer. Yeah? There are also, there are also the, there's also the possibility of applying here not force, but applying here weight, mass, okay? This force is in Newton, of course, yeah? and the mass is in kilograms. Yeah? Of course, the mass will produce a gravity force, and the gravity force is measured. Yeah. But there are sensors out there which are calibrated to mass, yeah. Wegezellen, weight sensors, yeah. and there are sensors out there which are calibrated in Newton force measurement sensors, yeah. Kraftzellen. Actually, they are the same. They are the same. It's just the calibration, okay, that I know what is the outcome. That's that's the principle. That's the principle of force measurement. I said, okay, we are measuring the strain. Yeah? I have never told you how we are going to measure the strain. Yeah? This will be in our next video, how strain is measured. Yeah? For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.